Today I want you to look at your conversions and I'm not going to talk about how to how to set them up and all that technical stuff. I really just want you to look at what are the actions that you want people to take uh, as a result of your ads and are you tracking those actions and are they being reported in your campaign. So let's look at this. I'm going to show you a few examples here and show you what I would want to track if I was running these campaigns. So uh, first, what I always like to do is segment and segment by conversion and conversion action. This is going to list the different types of conversions that are being tracked through each campaign. So you can see here, we've only had one conversion tracked. It was a call from an ad. Uh, let's look at the conversions. And of course, it gives me an error, so let me refresh. Um, while I'm doing that, we'll look at the, the company here. So this is a, a therapy company, and you can see on the landing page, there's no phone number. Um, instead, there's a button where you can go book a session. But in other parts of the website, there are phone numbers. If you go to the contact page, there's a phone number. And in fact, if you go to the, the booking page, there is also a phone number there. So we can assume a, a lot of people are going to want to call versus just booking on the website. In the account, though, we're not tracking phone calls. It looks like we're, we're attempting to, attract, to track appointment requests but nothing has been tracked here. So that's one thing I would look at is after someone books the appointment on the website, are they being tracked? Either the, the booking system should integrate with Google Ads or it would redirect back to your website to a thank you page where you can put your tracking code. So that's one thing that I'd wanna track are people booking appointments on the website. The other one would be people calling from the website and to do that you'll want to use some third party call tracking system. I use CallRail. I know a lot of people who use phone wagon and like that. Um, but some some type of system that will allow you to track when people click your ad, land on your website and then call the phone number from your website. Those phone calls can be reported back into Google Ads. Um, and then, of course, calls from ads, I would continue to track those. But we should be seeing a lot more conversions here than just the one. And then when we have more conversions in the campaign, there's a lot more that we will be able to do to actually optimize the performance. Let's look at another example. This is for a uh, piano teacher, piano lesson teacher. And in this search campaign, it was actually just turned off, I was told, because there weren't many conversions coming in. When I look at the conversions being tracked, it's only tracking trial lesson requests, which looking at the website uh, is right here. People are filling out this form for a trial lesson, and then they are getting tracked as a conversion. But also on the website, is a phone number. So I would make sure to be tracking the phone number. A lot of people, I would guess in this, for piano lessons, most people are probably gonna call the number rather than fill out this form to get an intro lesson. So by not, by not tracking phone calls, you are losing out on that data. It's very likely that people actually have been calling from this campaign and they just haven't been getting tracked. Let's look at how the conversions are set up in this account. So I can see there is a phone call conversion here that looks like it's probably from uh, from call rail. That's what theirs looks like. But really there haven't been any, at least recently, maybe call rail was installed once and then it was removed. 
In my opinion, it's more than worth it to get an account at CallRail so that you have that data and you can optimize the campaign. And in this case, you can know whether or not to keep the campaign on. Obviously, if there are lots of phone calls coming from this campaign, you would want to keep that on versus pausing it because people aren't filling out the trial request form. So for this one, I'd make sure to track the the online form, which it looks like is tracking, um, and also make sure you're tracking phone calls through some type of third-party tracking system. We'll look at one more here. So this one is tracking quite a lot of things. They are tracking, uh, we'll just look at the, the main search campaign here. They're tracking people who who view the booking page and people who view the prices page. Now, if that's the only option, it'd be better to track a page view as a conversion than to track nothing. But a page view doesn't tell us a whole lot unless it's a thank you page. If we look at this company, it's a company that does uh, luau experiences. Okay, so people are most likely calling to schedule that. The number is very prominent here at the top of the page. People are most likely calling that number quite a bit. Um, that's probably the main conversion that we want to be tracking. If we look in the conversion settings here, So if we're looking here, um, we see these page view conversions that are set up, and, and these are accounting for most of the conversions. Um, the call extension on the ad is tracking. We see this on-site call tracking. So this is Google's, this is Google's website call tracking. And we can see last month there were five calls tracked from the website. I guess not last month, but since uh, since December, Google has only tracked five calls from the website. I don't know if that's because the this has been installed incorrectly or if it's just not working very well. To be honest, I've never seen a, a campaign that's using Google's native call tracking integration. I've never seen that tracking accurately. I use third-party systems, and I'd recommend that you get that set up because I am sure most people are calling this phone number, and that's what you want to track. That's going to be a much more valuable conversion to, to get the data on rather than uh, these page view conversions that are being used right now. It looks like there might be a couple higher value conversions like this uh, this silver deal conversion. Um, this might actually be people people purchasing something on the website. I'm not sure how that's being tracked. But as you can see, there aren't many of those. There were only three of those silver deal conversions that's not enough to actually optimize a, a campaign with. So being able to track the calls in this campaign, I think is going to be very important. And then if there are people filling out uh, the contact form, this is another thing that you'd wanna set up tracking for. Um, and that'd be about as valuable as a phone call. So uh, those are the main things that I'd wanna be able to optimize for in this campaign. So go through your campaign, make sure you are tracking the conversions that you actually want to be optimizing for. Within the campaigns too, you can go in now to settings and you can select the specific conversions that you want a campaign to, to optimize for. So uh, under conversions here in the settings, you can choose specific conversions 
to look at. So even if you have all these page view conversions and all this extra stuff set up, you can say for this campaign, I only want to be shown the conversion data for calls from the website, calls from the ads, and uh, contact forms. And then once that's set up, those are the only conversions that are gonna show up in the data for this campaign. So that's what I wanted to point out today. Uh, hopefully you can get your conversion set up so you're looking at the correct data and making decisions based on the correct actions that people are actually taking on your website.